What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, I am super excited because in my personal opinion, I think this is gonna be one of the most exciting videos, for me at least, because in today's video, we're gonna be harvesting our sweet potatoes. So these sweet potatoes are sweet potatoes that we grew ourselves from slips that we made from store-bought sweet potatoes. Now we did a whole video on how to make your own sweet potato slips, and I'd recommend checking it out if you're at all interested in doing this yourself. Now, I have no idea what we're gonna get, but I will say the plants look incredible. Now, the thing that you wanna look for when your plants are getting ready to be harvested, because they're actually very cold tolerant, believe it or not, but the sweet potatoes start to turn red and brown. You'll notice a lot of these leaves have some uh, cold weather slash frost damage. We didn't technically get a frost, but we did get down to 36 degrees. So um, <laughs> cold enough, that they probably were like, all right, we're done. And so all of that energy is being stored down in the roots themselves. And so you wanna wait as long as you can because sweet potatoes are basically a tuber that stores energy from the plant down in the root system. So as long as you can last, let them go. Um, you know, there is a tad bit more green growth here, but not so much that, it's that, um, that it uh, would justify keeping them in the ground longer. So we're gonna pull all this stuff up here and see what we got. Now, another really cool thing to learn about sweet potatoes is they're actually native to Southeast Asia and areas like the Philippines. Now, these are, are actually a vine, and when they grow, they will actually set down roots all along the vine. So if these, uh, these parts of the stem were actually allowed to touch, they actually have these little, these little rooting nodes here, and the areas <laughs> that have been exposed to high humidity and lots of moisture have actually started to root. But um, when we pull these up, um, there, there sometimes will be uh, little offshoots of sweet potatoes as well. So when you're growing your sweet potatoes, a lot of people don't like to let them vine and get crazy, but that can actually be an advantage to you because the more you can let your vines, uh, let your vines vine, <laughs> the more roots they're gonna set down, the healthier the overall plant is gonna be, but it also has the opportunity to produce even more potatoes. So I don't really think that we're gonna get a whole lot of extra potatoes just because we're growing in a raised bed and, um, and they, they got kind of a late start. So the rabbits really kind of kept them contained through most of the early part of the season. But had they been allowed to trail and, and vine out, we definitely would have had some, uh, some uh, vines that actually set down roots outside of the raised beds. Just a tip for you guys, if you got the space, let them go crazy. All right, so it's starting to rain kind of hard here. So we're gonna, get, uh, we're gonna get these harvested so we can get out of the rain. But I wanted to show you guys this because these are ready to be harvested. I wanna turn this bed into our fall bed here. I wanna plant some more radishes in their place. So I definitely wanna make sure that these get up in a timely fashion. That's why we wouldn't wait another day. But we've got a lot of growth here and I'm just gonna kind of start pulling. I don't necessarily know where the sweet potatoes are gonna be because we started with five plants and now it looks like we have a thousand plants. <laughs> so we'll just kind of see what we get. So uh, I, got a good, I got a good cluster right here that I think is, is gonna be a, a promising, promising spot. Okay, well, uh, there is a sweet potato there. <laughs> there is, oh, that's the mother. That's the, so there's, there's one <laughs> little sweet potato. It's uh, hopefully not reflective of the, um, this is, the, this is the mother plant. This was the cutting that we took the potato from. So um, I'm hoping that there's gonna be more potatoes down here, because otherwise that'll be embarrassing. <laughs> so there aren't any. Uh, so we're gonna keep pulling. <laughs> you know, gardening is really about trial and error. Because the thing is, is that I want to be able to learn and the only way that I really learn is through experience. Now, I didn't do anything wrong necessarily with, uh, with these plants. They were growing great, they looked awesome. The one thing I will say is that the rabbits, the rabbits did, uh, did kind of have a tendency to, um, they did have kind of a tendency to, to munch on the plants in the early season. And, um, and I think that attributed to the lack thereof of tuber production because the growth was just, it kept getting cut back so much. I don't think this is a tuber. I think this is part of the cutting we took. But I also understand that gardening is so much about a journey of learning, you know, trial and error, learning what works 
and realizing that not everything you do <laughs> is gonna work out. We don't know what variety we got from the grocery store, right? And so this is a very valuable learned experience, which is that certain varieties do better in certain areas. And because I didn't know the origin of where, you know, the origin of where the sweet potatoes were grown, I also didn't know the variety of sweet potato, I may have grown a variety that did not excel well here in Michigan with Michigan's nasty weather. So things you gotta start thinking. It's not always your fault. The plants looked great, right? The plants looked amazing, but we're just not getting the sweet potato production that I was expecting. And so because of that, we have to kind of assess what might have gone wrong. All right, so now we're gonna dig up around where the plants were and see if we didn't get any more. Oh, no way! Oh, no way! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, man! The sweet potato was just down lower. Positive thoughts. That's a great sign, actually. That's really cool. Okay. So I didn't know, yeah, I really didn't have many expectations for this. Um, there's the other little bit that I broke. So we're gonna just dig this very carefully. Oh, you gotta be joking me. I broke another one. I don't know, this is crazy. This is definitely a first for me. I have grown sweet potatoes before, only one other time, but the sweet potatoes were all like right on the surface. These ones are incredibly deep. And uh, because of that, it's making it really challenging to know where not to dig. Hey, there we go. Look at that. A little sweet potato. We're learning together, you guys. This is fun. These sweet potatoes are forming in the clay underneath our raised bed, which is actually crazy because it's so deep. Well, number one, I did not know what to expect, but I'm also learning something through this process, and that's that you really have to respect the root system of a sweet potato. They have incredibly deep roots. We're down, I mean, like, I don't know if you guys can tell the color difference, but we're down probably eight, 12 inches down into the soil. And we're into the old clay layer from the garden that has not yet been, you know, amended and stuff like that. And there are sweet potato roots burrowing down into that. So that's why a lot have broken, not because of my shovel, but because when I pull them up, they're so rooted into that clay layer that I don't really know where they're gonna be. The thing that's frustrating, see the thing that's frustrating for me is I don't know where to dig. That's the frustrating thing because if I knew where they'd be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have just dug there. Like, like that would have been a good sized sweet potato. It's gonna be dinner, like I said. We're just gonna cook it up with dinner. <laughs> look, at how, look how deep I am. And look at this, look at this, look at this. Look how deep I was. So check this out, look at the color of the soil. I mean, this, is, this was basically 100% in the clay layer. These are so incredibly deep. And I mean, like you could make pottery with this stuff. Like, I mean, like, look at this. Look at this, you guys, this is crazy. Look at this. These are sweet potato roots. And this was from probably 16 to 18 inches deep. So uh, I'm gonna just keep kind of digging up. We're gonna kind of do a final harvest and overview, lessons learned, and uh, final takeaways for you guys to hopefully learn from so you don't make the same mistakes or at least maybe understand that if things went wrong for you, maybe kind of make some, uh, make some correlations. All right, so I don't know if you can tell, but we are getting absolutely soaked here. It's been a pretty steady drizzle the whole morning, but I wanted to get these harvested. I wanted to show you what we got. And uh, yeah, check this out, look at this. There's just, everything is just so slippery and muddy. Like look at, I mean, if you're not having a, a muddy day in the garden, at least once a year, you're not a gardener. So. This is just comes with the territory. I'm excited to be out in the garden. It's nice. Smells like fall. Gotta love fall. But the harvest left a little bit to be desired. <laughs> Let me show you what we got. All right, so we're just washing these off. I will say the color is so beautiful. Now granted, these do need to be cured for two weeks in order to make it taste like a sweet potato. But I'm not gonna waste these. I'm still gonna cook them up tonight for dinner. And uh, if anything, I'll throw them in with something else, like some potatoes and some beets and stuff, and you won't really taste the uh, 
the lack thereof of flavor um, because they won't have all of that complexity. They won't have all those sugars developed yet. They really need to be cured. Now, assuming you had better luck than I did, I mean, that was a, that was a good size sweet potato, but again, it broke in the clay. Look at how deep, I mean, that is a deep taproot. Check that out. Um, so assuming you had a good sweet potato harvest, how do you cure your potatoes? Well, what you need to do is put them in a cardboard box. Put them in a cardboard box and leave them in a room that's at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if that is centigrade, but I'll have Ashlyn throw a little centigrade. <laughs> for, uh, for those that are not in the United States watching, growing sweet potatoes, um, uh, I'll have that in centigrade. But you need at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit for at least two weeks. And what that's going to do is it's essentially going to, uh, it's going to harden up the skin it's going to reduce the moisture content just enough to help those sugars kind of uh, concentrate. And then you're going to be left with a really flavorful sweet potato. So it's not hard to do, not hard to do. You'll hear some people say, you gotta get the humidity right and stuff like that. Okay, sure. Um, you know, humidity does play a role, but not a massive role. The biggest thing from people that I've spoken with about curing sweet potatoes is the temperature and the duration. That's really it. So just uh, put them in a cardboard box and, um, and then let them sit for two weeks, slightly above room temperature. I like to put them in like a furnace room, basically is a great place to put them. All right, so there we go. There is all of the yield all washed up. And I gotta say, I'm not incredibly stoked by the yield, but I'm incredibly stoked that we didn't get skunked. That's one way to look at it. We could have gotten nothing. So I'm very grateful for what these plants produced for me. I'm also really grateful for the beauty that they gave the garden. All summer long, I was able to look at this incredible bed of green foliage and it looked so pretty. So I'm not upset by that at all either. And I did hear from a lot of you that the foliage is also edible. Now, I have not tried eating it. I'll be honest, I did not eat any this summer. Maybe next summer I'll actually adventure out and try it. It apparently tastes really good. And so I'll look up some recipes on how to use that because that would again, just be kind of like, I consider it like, like the beet scenario, right? You might not get beautiful beet roots, but the beet tops are awesome in salads and juiced and things like that. So those multi-purpose vegetables can give some, some silver lining to an otherwise less than successful harvest. And so um, that is what we got. Now, another key takeaway here, I wanna give you the takeaways that I learned. So one key takeaway is even if you have deep soil, you could go deeper. Um, I thought my soil with 12 inch deep raised beds was plenty. However, it was not plenty because once the tap roots actually started growing, the potatoes grew another eight to 10 inches down further than that. And so I ended up with about 20 inches of soil that I needed to have beautiful, loose, and amended. And my 12 was not nearly enough. And so they were down in the clay layer, which made harvesting very difficult. Takeaway number one. Takeaway number two, I think that if I would have started them earlier, I got a late start because um, this was kind of an afterthought planting. I had the sweet potatoes growing, and I thought, all right, well, you know what? Let's just, tr let's just try growing them. And so I showed you guys how to make the slips, but the slips didn't actually go into the ground until about early June. They should have been planted much sooner, so they had a longer time to kind of get established. Takeaway number three is definitely put up some rabbit control if you have rabbits in the area. They treated that like their living salad bar for basically a month and a half, two months of the year. And so it took a long time for them to get uh, growing to the point where their consumption did not affect the overall growth rate of the plant. Because um, for, the, for the first month and a half, two months, every time it would grow a little bit, they'd knock it back. And then eventually it got growing and ramped up speed to the point where it outgrew that. So had I protected them a little bit, I think they would have definitely produced a little bit more. And then the fourth takeaway is that I think they also would have maybe produced a tad bit more had I fertilized a little bit more. I did notice that the growth slowed considerably around like September and they still had a lot of growth left in them. And I think because uh, it was a little difficult to fertilize the soil after the fact because of how much foliage there was, that had I fertilized more in the beginning, there would have been some residual fertilizer for them to use throughout the growing season, primarily nitrogen, I think would have been the, a big addition there. So um, lots of takeaways, lots of takeaways, definitely some things uh, to, to learn and adapt. I won't say that grocery store sweet potato slips are a failure because obviously they're not. This is just one way that you maybe could learn on how not to grow sweet potatoes. And down the road, we're gonna get success. We're definitely gonna succeed at growing sweet potatoes and I'm excited about it. So thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this journey. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments box down below if your sweet potato harvest was amazing or if it was a flop. 
and uh, some stuff you learned, as well as some stuff that I might be able to apply in next year's garden. So take care, everyone. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and grow bigger.